So here we are in the garage and this is where I do my extracting. So when I set up, I try and make it as compact as possible and that helps minimize potential for dropping honey on the ground. Um, so you can see in my setup here, I got a hand washing station because uh, your hands are going to get sticky, your utensils are going to get sticky, everything's going to get sticky. Here are the frames waiting to get uncapped. This is my uncapping station. I got just a piece of wood with a screw inverted in it that I rest the frame on there as I'm uncapping it. Um, and then this is one of those crush and strain bucket combos that you can see tutorials online for where it's got the bottom bucket has a hole cut out the lid that the second bucket sits on um, and then this bucket has a bunch of holes drilled in the bottom. I do have a comb filter where all the cappings fall into and then the honey drains out of and then I got another filter between the two buckets. This is one of those drill powered honey spinners. Um, I got the idea from Chase at Kilted Craftworks and I'll put a, a link in the show notes there so you can go check out his tutorial on how to build that. Um, I do have two suggestions though, well three actually. One is that the bottom you create a piece of wood with um, some wood on it to hold it in place so it doesn't wobble around. Um, two is you put another one of the spacers between the bottom bucket and your to make more room in the bottom there for honey to accumulate. And also I was using my cordless drill uh, to do this and some of the magic was coming out the top of it. There was smoke escaping from it. So I wouldn't suggest using that. I'd use kind of this uh, low gear mixer instead and that works great. Um, yeah, and then I put the, the finish extracted frames in here and they drain a little bit more into there, but uh, that's the basic setup. So we'll just run through the process here with one frame. So this frame was the one that was from the Timmy Hive and that's the one that was uh, cross combed between the other frame beside it. So we'll do that one. So this will be quite a bit into the uncapping. So we're going to do a couple. Just make sure that it's the frames are opposite each other to help balance it out. Whoa. Get it right in there. Whoa. <laughs> So the honey that was from the extractor needs to clarify for a bit or let all the air bubbles come out of it so it's nice and clear. But the honey from the cappings is all ready to go so we're going to start bottling. bountiful harvest. Well, actually, it's not all here. We already gave some away to friends and family, like a, this size jar and this size. And we, we ate this much here. And of course, you always lose some to sampling during the process. 
So from those 10 frames, we got almost exactly 33 pounds of honey, or 15 kilograms. And that's just the honey, not including the containers. So as you can see, we're still waiting for some of the air bubbles to rise out. But when it does, our honey is a extra light amber color. And it consists of wildflowers um, and fruit tree blossoms, uh, like plums, cherries, nectarines, peaches, and apples from here in Vernon, BC. If you haven't checked out part one, Robbing Hives, then you better go and check it out. If you like my content, thumbs up and subscribe.